Hey everyone, I'm Austin Black. I'm here as a solutions engineer from DigitalOcean and uh, we'll give it a minute or two just for everyone to filter in uh, who's gonna be coming to this today. All right. Oh, hi, Tyler. Thanks for coming to stop by. All right, we'll give it another minute or two, probably just another minute, and then we'll get started here. All right, well, we might as well get started. Hey, hi, Pete. Thanks for joining us. All right, so uh, yeah, thanks for joining us live today. Like I said, I'm Austin. I'm a solutions engineer here at DigitalOcean, and I'm gonna share some helpful tips today before uh, my webinar that's coming up about uh, creating an e-commerce site. So in the coming weeks, I'll be putting on a talk about how to set up an e-commerce site on DigitalOcean in under an hour, and you can register for that talk uh, by clicking on the link in the description. Um, so we also have a, an awesome playlist filled with other community tutorials. So make sure to check those out in the description as well. My webinar that's coming up uh, on July 7th is going to be focused on Magento and it's going to cover topics such as horizontal scalability and how to make sure that uh, your site is actually enterprise ready. That's a bit much for today though. So today I'm just gonna share three helpful tips for what to do when you're getting started and what to keep in mind when you're building and optimizing your e-commerce site. First and foremost, you really wanna use a CDN. CDNs or content delivery networks are great for delivering static assets and media and can really reduce the time it takes to load your site. They will save, help you save on bandwidth costs, uh, load times, and just there's really no reason not to use one. So make sure that you use a CDN with your e-commerce site. So the second tip I'd like to provide is uh, use a database caching service like Redis or Memcached D. Uh, these will greatly speed up your queries, especially for databases that aren't write heavy. Certain services like DigitalOcean's managed Redis service can be employed to, for these kinds of uh, workloads as well. Last but not least, make sure you back up your stuff. Disaster recovery should be at the forefront of your mind whenever you're architecting a new system. Ensuring you have a strong backup system will give you great peace of mind as well as prepare your system for future issues, challenges, and upgrades. Um, yeah, does anybody have any questions about e-commerce or about the webinar? Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining in the chat. I see you there. So yeah, any uh, questions or anything that I can answer for you guys while I'm here? Feel free to drop one in the chat. Nope, all right. Uh, why CDNs? That's a good question. Um, so CDNs are great for, uh, well, so let's look at the, that term first of all, content delivery network. It's a network that delivers content, obviously. Um, what that basically means is that even if your server is hosted, let's say in the UK, by using something like, a, by using a CDN with, that employs edge caching. <laughs> nice joke with the headphones. <laughs> uh, you can, uh, your content will be cached at the edge globally. So even though your server is located in the UK, the content can be still cached in the Americas, in Australia, wherever you need it to be. And so it really helps your global availability regardless of your server location. Uh, and even in the UK itself, uh, for example, if your server is in London, but you're serving content in Scotland, a CDN will help you uh, with your load times across the entire United Kingdom.
So scalable websites don't always need high performance servers. That's useful for that's great for monolithic designs where you have one large server and that's it. But today's designs mo focus more on horizontal scalability. That is, you add more servers as opposed to having one really big one. Uh, any experience with non-PHP based e-commerce frameworks? Nothing against PHP. Well, plenty. I can't. Con uh, I have my own feelings about PHP too. <laughs> um, unfortunately, off the top of my head, I don't. Most of my work focuses on the LAMP stack. And so, um, yeah, I don't have any recommendations for uh, non-PHP e-commerce frameworks right now. All right. So the difference between static content and dynamic content, static content never changes. It's stuff like uh, scripts that don't change, photos, et cetera, et cetera. Um, dynamic content is stuff that is generated typically at the edge. So for example, if you could generate your thumbnails at the edge of a photo, if you have a photo, uh, you could generate the thumbnail at the edge itself. That would be an example of dynamic content. The photo itself that the thumbnail is being generated from, that's static content. I hope that helps. I mean, PHP, it just turned 25, I think, 2025. Uh, LinkedIn user, that's a good question. When you say best approach for communication between different regions in DO, um, are you talking about like server to server communication or could you, exp you expand on your question a little bit, please? Okay, uh, while well, I'm waiting for uh, our LinkedIn user to elaborate on the best approach for communication between different regions in DigitalOcean, because I'm not sure exactly what type of communication you're asking about there. How is CDN different from managed storage? Well, so managed storage fundamentally is a different product. Um, there are two types of managed storage. There's object storage and block storage. Object storage is unstructured data that lives someplace where you don't care about the file format and um, it can be operated on various different ways. Block storage is closer to attaching a hard drive uh, to the actual droplet or server in question. A CDN can work with both of those. A CDN is an additional layer that reads off of that storage and builds a cache on the edge of a network in order to uh, deliver that content faster. Uh, droplet to droplet, for example, perfect. Okay, so uh, typically, there's two different ways to tackle this problem. One is just to have them communicate over their private or over their public interfaces, which is not always ideal because then you can get dinged for bandwidth. It's going over public internet, et cetera, et cetera. Typically for those situations, I'll recommend that you employ a droplet as a gateway with a virtual private uh, cloud backing that uh, gateway. And so what happens is that you stand up a droplet, you configure it as a gateway, you have all of your other droplets connect to that droplet, and then they connect to the uh, rest of the infrastructure in that region. We have a great community article on how to run uh, a droplet as a gateway. I hope that helps. Any other questions? So when I say CDN, I just mean the general class of technologies uh, for CDN. It could be DigitalOcean CDN. It could be a third-party CDN. This advice is fairly platform agnostic. And yes, we do already have an integrated CDN with our Spaces offering. It works with our object storage. So fundamentally, you don't want to put private resources someplace that has a CDN. A CDN is great for data that doesn't need to be secured, for media, for for scripts that aren't uh, that don't contain secure information, et cetera, et cetera. So CDNs are ideal for generally we recommend media, minified JavaScript files, CSS files, et cetera.
All right. I don't see any other questions at this time. One moment here. I'll just go through the chat one more time. Sorry, I don't mean know what you mean by just GraphQL there, but um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Please make sure to uh, register for my upcoming talk in the description. Like I said, there are also tons of community videos from industry experts on the DigitalOcean YouTube channel, which is also in the description. So be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the tech talk talks coming up, and I will see you guys in two weeks.